Hi friends, you're welcome to the Search the Scripture lesson. Um, the Lord has been helping us go through the Word, chapter by chapter, how He has been blessing us through His Word. And um, the last episode on the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel according to Matthew, remember we're still on that series, the series of um, the Gospel according to Matthew. And the last episode was on Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. The Lord blessed us in that episode. If you missed the episode, click on the link, I think, here. Click on the link and it will take you to that um, video. And in this lesson, we are looking at the death of John the Baptist. The death of John the Baptist. But before we start, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for such a wonderful time. It's always a joy to be in your presence, to study. Lord, we pray that you open the pages of the scripture. Speak to every life. Teach us. Inspire us through your word. Even through the life of the man called John. The forerunner, the Baptist, the voice, and the wilderness. Lord, we pray that you will engulf us with his boldness his mind, his courage, we come upon our lives in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, inspire your word. Speak to us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Um, once again, you're welcome to the Search the Scripture lesson. And our text is taken from Matthew, Matthew chapter 14, from verse 1 to 13. We are not really looking at the whole chapter of Matthew chapter 14. We're just looking at verse 1 to verse 13. Uh, read with me. If you have your Bible, turn up to Matthew chapter 13. If you don't have your Bible, the verses will be on the screen as you study together. God bless you. Um, Matthew chapter 13 from verse 1, I read. It says... At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servant, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. This text gives account of the martyrdom of John the Baptist. The ministry of John the Baptist had effectively prepared the way for Jesus Christ as the prophet Isaiah earlier prophesied. He said in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. As the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ increased, that of John was gradually coming to an end. He was captured by Herod and he was placed in the prison. But you know, we are not looking at that today. We are focused on his death and his burial. And um, in this topic, which is the death, the death of John the Baptist, we have three points to consider. Point one is Jesus' pervading influence. Jesus' pervading influence and Herod's misconception. Let's come to our text, Matthew chapter 14. I read from verse 1. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. The ministry of Jesus, which started humbly, eventually reached everywhere. The Bible says his fame spread abroad. Look at Mark chapter 1, verse 28. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Round about Galilee. The, the chapter starts with, at that time, Herod the Tetrarch. If you come across the word tetrach, it's, an, it's a title. Tetrach is a title which means a ruler of a fourth part of a country. Mostly um, 
under the reign of the Roman Empire. You know, so Herod, the Herod we are looking at here today, Herod Antipas, Antipas Herod, the son of Great the Great, Herod the Great. Herod the Great ruled and reigned in the time of the birth of Jesus. You remember Herod that said to the wise men, go worship him and come give me words so that I would go and worship also. But the angel gave them um, the secret, his mind, that he was not really coming. He didn't mean to come to worship but to kill Jesus. So Herod died after Joseph took Jesus and his wife. They fled down to Egypt and after his death he returned. So Herod the Great had three sons, Achilles, Antipas and Philip. And when he died, his kingdom was divided among his sons, which um, Antipas was ruling the fourth part of the kingdom, the fourth part of the kingdom. Why the brothers, Achilles, Philip, they were ruling the other parts of the kingdom. And um, we're looking at the death of John. What happened to John? John was a man, a prophet, well known in the kingdom. The Bible said they all knew he was a prophet. And they could not, they didn't fact. Even Herod knew. The Bible said in Mark chapter 6 verse 20. For Herod feared John knowing that he was a just man and holy and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. Herod knew he was a just man. Herod knew he was holy. And most of the times Herod listened to John. And you know, pastors, preachers, you might have people, dignitaries in your congregation. Sometimes they love to hear you. But when it comes to the matter that concerns them, a situation that concerns them, most preachers don't talk about it. Why? Because um, there's this man that sponsors my ministries, my ministry, and I don't think I have to speak about those things because he's involved in those things. No, John was a man. When it's time to speak the word, he spoke the truth and the full truth, the full gospel that was John for you. And he spoke the word and the Bible said, Herod, Herod heard him gladly. And it came to a point where Herod, in verse, in verse 2, and he said unto his servant, This is John the Baptist, his risen from the dead. Therefore, mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Jesus' fame spread abroad. He went everywhere. He was teaching the people. He, Herod heard of him. Everybody heard of Jesus. But Herod thought Jesus was John because he had killed John already. And he thought the mighty works done as a prophet and I think it's John but no people have different um, view about Jesus in his earthly ministry like he asked Peter he asked his disciples in Matthew chapter 16 verse 13 when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples saying whom do men say that I the son of man am and they said some say that thou art john the baptist <laughs> herod said that too some say thou art john the baptist some elias others jeremiah or one of the prophets and he said unto them but whom say ye that i am and simon peter answered and said thou art the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you, but my father, but my father which is in heaven. How you see Jesus matters. Many people saw him as a prophet. 
Many people saw him. They say, one of the prophets. Some said Elias. Some said John the Baptist. Some said Jeremiah. You know, but how do you see him? And the question is coming to you, how? How do you see Jesus? Do you see him like just a prophet? Do you see him as a savior? You know, the scribes and the Pharisees, they didn't see him as a savior. They looked down at him. A lot of people looked down at him. They, 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 they said a lot of things about Jesus. Ah, a mighty prophet. They, the Jews, many of the Jews didn't believe he was the Messiah. And he came to pay the price for you and I. He died on the cross. He shed his blood. And at the end, he said, it is finished. He paid the price. Let's look at verse 2. And he said unto his servant, This is John the Baptist, his risen from the dead. And therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. He's risen from the dead. At least um, Herod believed <laughs> in um, resurrection. The scribes, the Sadducees, they never believed in anything called resurrection, spirits, or angels. They never believed. But Herod believed in resurrection. But his own resurrection was not scriptural. He was talking about reincarnation, which is not scriptural. That is not scriptural. The Bible has said it's appointed unto men once to die and after death, judgment. We are coming to the next point, which is John's imprisonment and tragic death john's imprisonment and tragic death come to our text in matthew chapter 14 from verse 3 for herod had laid hold on john and bound him and put him in prison for herodias sake his brother's philip wife for john said unto him it is not lawful for thee to have her and when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John the Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the old sick and them which sat with him at the meat, he commanded it to be given her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. John declared the word to Herod and he caught him, he placed him in the prison. Why? Because he said to him, it is not lawful for you to take your brother's wife. Herod Antipas took um, the wife of Philip, his brother, Herodias. And um, that, that is unscriptural. You know, the Bible, the law in the book of Leviticus chapter 18 verse 16. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. He says, you don't have to uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife. Why take your brother's wife? It's not scriptural. And Paul said in the book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 3. So then, if why her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law so that she is no adulteress though she be married to another man so john spoke to him he told him that it's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife divorce getting married to another man while your partner is still alive is not scriptural the bible calls it adultery it's adultery and i pray the lord we help us open our eyes for we to understand the mind and the will of God for us. When the word of God comes to us, we should not get angry, but we should go back, think about it, and make 
an amend, make amend to the ways to please God and to work before God because at the end we all want to make it to heaven. So it's not all about getting angry at the word or getting angry at the preacher like Herod did. He got angry and Herodias also got angry. Why? Because John spoke about their evil deeds and the plan. Herodias had that intention to kill John. And John, John was beheaded on his birthday. He made a rash promise and he said, You've pleased me well, the dance. Even my captains, the elders of Galilee, you've pleased us well. And do you know what? Ask anything. I want to do something for you. Ask anything, even to the half of my kingdom, and I will give it to you. So the promise in the front of everybody. And she went to her mother, the wicked mother, the sinful mother, the murderous mother, <laughs> went to her and she said, what do I ask? And she said, go tell him you want the head of John the Baptist. And he died. The, he, John the Baptist was beheaded. It was brought to her by charger. And do you know what? A lot of preachers say, they say um, John the Baptist spoke the word. That is why his ministry came to an end. No. He said, I must decrease. Why? Jesus Christ must increase. You know, John came as a forerunner to Jesus. And Jesus Christ's ministry began to increase. His was gradually coming to an end. That was the plan of God for John. It was not because of how he spoke to Herod, but it was the will and the plan of God. And you know, if God says no, no man can say yes. If God says it's not your time to die, no man can cut your life short. And Herod cannot even cut your life short. Pharaoh could not cut Moses' life short. So you know, God planned God's plan for um, John was that his ministry would come to an end while Christ's ministry will increase, spread abroad, and touch many lives. And I pray the ministry of Christ is still spreading abroad. It's still going from nations to nations. And I pray you'll be part of those people conveying the gospel to the sinners. And the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. We come to this third point, which is the third point, which is believers' persecution in perspective. Believers' persecution in perspective. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, come to Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. He says rejoice. Persecution will come. Rejoice. Christ said to them, they that shall live godly shall suffer what? Persecution. Persecution should be um, what every believer should expect with words. Even in our time, um, they tell you words. They persecute you. They try to put you down. They try to despise you with words. Sometimes it comes to a point of even bringing you down, embarrassing you in public. But he says, Rejoice. Look at Acts chapter 5, verse 40. And to him that agreed, and to them they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus Christ and let them go. And they depart from the presence of the councils, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And you know what? And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. They cease not 
to teach and preach Jesus Christ in 41 says they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy. They were beaten with many stripes and they were counted worthy to suffer. Jesus said rejoice. Rejoice for great is thy reward. Rejoice. And these people, the early church, after they were persecuted, they departed and the Bible said they rejoiced. They were jumping, they were happy that what they were counted worthy to suffer for his name. Do you get discouraged when people talk to you? Do you get discouraged when they try to despise you? Do you get discouraged when they say, ah, you're on too much? <laughs> you like doing? I don't even understand. Are you the Jesus? Are you this? Are you that? Come on, keep short. Don't speak. If we hear this, they spank you on your cheeks. They do this. They try to pull you down. They try to embarrass you. They try to despise you. Do you get discouraged and you say, I don't think I can continue. This is too much. Or do you rejoice and say to yourself, I am counted worthy to suffer for his name. Rejoice. For great is your reward. For great is your reward. For great is your reward. Come to Matthew chapter 5, verse 38. He says, Ye have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye, and the tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Turn to him the other also. That is the attitude in the time of persecution. He says, pray for them that despitefully use you. And I pray such mind you will grant to us. You remember Stephen. Stephen was declaring the word and they stoned Stephen to death. At the point of death, he said, Lord, lay it not to their charge. Lay it not to their charge. I pray that such heart will be given to us. That mind of Christ that when he was in the cross, he said, Lord, forgive them. For they don't know what they do. And I pray that mind that was in Christ will also be in us. Say, so let that mind which was in Christ Jesus be also in you. Let it be in you. And it will be in me also. And our world become better and better to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, we thank you for such a word, for how you've blessed us through your word, for how you've kept how you've been keeping us. We thank you for such a war, the death and the burial of John, the death of John the Baptist. Lord, we looked at his life. He was courageous. He spoke the word. Even those, the words that favored Herod and the ones that didn't favor him, he spoke the word. He didn't speak the word with fear or favor. Lord, I pray such courage you will give to us in Jesus' name. Like the disciples, the apostles said, we rather obey God than man. Lord, I pray such mindset, such focus, such spirit will be granted to us in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray we'll be fiery like John. We'll be bold like John. We'll be courageous like John. And we'll declare the world without fear and favor to the world in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, open our eyes to see you more, to know you more, to be like you more and more. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. And um, if you've not clicked on the subscribe button, please click on the subscribe button so you get notified whenever the search the scripture video drops. God bless you. God bless you. See you next time. Bye.